Hey, I'm Frost Drive, and today in Clip Studio Paint, I'm going to show you all the cool things that Clip Studio has to help you with your line art, and then we'll go into different line art styles too, and it'll be pretty fun. Let's go. So, here I have some different drawings of my character Claire from one of my web comics, and I did her with different settings for the pen, and I used the same pen the whole time, which is just the basic standard pen sort of brush. And first up, we got right here, this is just normal settings that I would use, which would be that the pen pressure was on, and then I used stabilization on 19. Stabilization is this setting right here, and 19 is like a little over halfway. And this is the result. A lot of, like a, a bad kind of tip, I think in my opinion, is people telling you just to put stabilization all the way maxed out at 100. And what that's gonna do is make the line art drag so much that it'll just slow you down. That's the only, that's it. That's enough of a con to not do it. So if you have stabilization at 100, check this out. Look how much it's lagging behind. Even if I try to draw quickly, it's, it doesn't work. But, but, Clip Studio Paint has made a really awesome feature this year called Adjust by Speed, where I can change this stabilization setting based on the speed of how much you're drawing. And right here, I have it on this way. You can have it on two ways. This way is reduce stabilization when drawing quickly. So if it's normally at 100, if I start drawing quickly, it's gonna catch up faster. That's on 100. Let's change it to a more reasonable spot, which is, I don't know, 40. So if I'm drawing slow, it's gonna have 43 stabilization. And if I go faster, it's gonna reduce stabilization because it doesn't need it, you know? And that's pretty awesome. If you wanna go the other way, you could have stabilization really low and then just turn it up when you're drawing slowly. So there's a zero stabilization on this, but if I start going slow, then it increased stabilization. But yeah, definitely cool. Check out this setting, adjust by speed. And you might be thinking, oh, how did you get such like cool tips? Uh, not uh, everywhere, but in most areas, you know, the line goes thick and then to a tip. And I'm not one of those artists that draws like 20 times and does 20 attempts for each line in the drawing. That's also a waste of time. That's only thinking in an additive mode as well. When you're doing line art, you also gotta think in a subtraction mode. With the pen tool, you can go to this alpha, which just kind of makes it an eraser. So you would make a line and see that's not going to uh, points at the end. So then I could just push my customized hotkey to make it to the alpha and then Wow. I follow a YouTuber named Boro Drawing who's really good at art and in one of his videos he said that drawers need to think like carvers or something like that. You need to carve lines. And that is like the, the right mindset. Next up, we got this style which uses a feature that I'm pretty sure is only in Clip Studio Paint and it's a really freaking awesome feature. So many times in other programs, you, you would make lines and then they would get these overlaps things. And you'd be like, oh gosh, and you'd have to erase them all manually. And when that happens on a hundred times per drawing, it, it sucks. And look at that, it's not even perfect. It doesn't even look good. But the cool thing with clip, make sure you're on a vector layer. Always do line art on a vector layer. It's pretty much the smartest thing to do. Then go to your eraser, make sure you're on this setting. Erase up to intersection. Guess what? I just have to tap it and, and it's gone. Perfect. And while I'm on the topic, if you go over here, to your layer properties and make sure you have your vector layer selected because if you're on some other layer, those settings, don't, they're not there. Make sure you're on your vector layer. Then click the hand icon, which is the pinch line tool. And that lets you be able to move the line around like spaghetti noodles. Like say, whatever this is, let's say it just needed to be like that to look good. Boom, I don't have to draw it 20 attempts. To, to get it right, you just move the line a little bit and then that's awesome. Thirdly, the awesomest thing is that if you click here on the adjust line width tool, this can change the width of your line art. So lots of times like I've drawn characters and then I draw the next character and then like the line art weight isn't the same. And in other programs, <sighs> good luck. You have to redraw it, have fun. But in Clip, you can fix this in just a half a second. You just get the right setting if you want to thicken or narrow. And I have the setting on like a one point something setting is pretty low. And what you have to do is just highlight whatever line art you want to affect, and then it does it. 
And I like to have a low setting and then just highlight it a few times to get, get it until I think it's right. And then you can backspace and redo until you find the one that just looks perfect. And going back to the crisscross erasing thing, this right here is where I did the crisscross sort of method, which as opposed to how some people line art, which is going really slow. I've actually read some tutorials here that said, go slow, be careful, slow arcs. No, just go as fast as you can because you don't have that much time on this planet. You can go fast and that's gonna make your lines better most of the time. Let me just draw a hair really quick. Yeah, let's say I have a character's hair here and I'm not being careful to make the lines match up perfectly because it doesn't actually matter. Watch. I can just go to the eraser tool, make sure this is selected, then just take off anything extra with a single tap. Go fast, erase the things that crisscross. I call it crisscross because you're kind of crisscrossing the ends of things. And here on this image of Claire right here, I crisscrossed in as much areas as I can. The only times where I wouldn't would be like on round things like the shape of the face. And uh, if you want to see another example of this, I have a friend, Lewistrations, who's the creator of Apricot Cookies webcomic, and he has a video that where he shows how to do it. And his line art is like pff, impeccable. So go check that out if you really want to like see how crazy you can get with line art and clip. Then over here, I got a little bit crazy with the settings. Here on this thicker one, that was no pen pressure at all. Yeah, believe it or not, you maybe don't need it. I've seen web comics before that don't have the greatest line art or don't have the, even the greatest this or that, but it doesn't matter because the person's obviously focusing on other things like great composition, great characters, great storytelling. Those things matter more than your line art. The most amazing line art isn't gonna save like a bad picture with bad anatomy, a bad idea that's just boring or bad character design. Line art is just a very, very tiny spice in the soup. So don't overthink it too much. Sometimes you don't need good line art at all. And actually, why'd I say this is bad? It's not actually that bad. It has a certain charm to it. And sometimes that can be better than impeccable line art. Here on this last one that's super skinny, I just decided, because I'd already drawn this five times, I just wanna go super fast and see what happens then. And that's what happened. Does it look bad? I don't actually think so. I might be onto something. There's something about the uh, like slight MS paint look to it that I think looks pretty cool. And especially if you're just making a webcomic or something, don't care about the line art. Like everybody looks at a panel for three seconds. It doesn't matter that much, especially if you're doing it for free. So this was super fast and there's no stabilization. A couple of other things to note is that with no stabilization, you know, you can't make the rounded edges. You can't make like a pointy hair tips and things like that. But a thing you can simulate with it, say we have a hair and this is like, you know, inside the hair or something. You can round off this line in a different way just by placing a circle nearby it. It's a little bit odd, but it does create that effect of fading, which is what the line art is doing when it's going to a small tip. I noticed the video game Sword of Ditto did this. I think that's where I learned it from. So if you wanna see more examples, go check out Sword of Ditto, Momo's Curse. And I overdid it on this image just to show you a little bit. And on another side note, if you wanted to add just like a little bit of texture but not spend five hours on it, just put little hash marks in random places. Two little marks, especially on clothing, can look pretty good. And then lastly right here, I wanted to get into color. And first things first is that most people use black you don't have to, you can use some color. Personally, I put some purple in it. It's like a dark muted purple and I think that gives it a more pastel sort of look to it because I think that straight black looks way too muddy and especially in a, like traditional American comics, it just looks so muddy and kind of lifeless. It sucks the life out of the art of it. And it, I think a lot of people use like a dark red, especially for skin, a dark muted red, by the way. And that can just, pop more life into it. So experiment with colors, don't just stick with black, but you can use it if you've experimented and you really like black. But here with color, I found a cool thing you can do recently, and that is a trick to color line art, but not everywhere, because when you do that, it takes way too much time, especially if you have a character with a hundred colors. So the thing is, let's say I have an arm here, and instead of coloring the line art for the whole thing, I'm gonna do it only for parts that where it goes on the inside. You know, when the thing is like going in on itself, when there's black line on the inside, and then just color that. 
that's the trick. Like right here, good example is the hair or the nose. That's an outline that's on the inside of the face. And yeah, you can probably see it is what I mean just by looking at it. And that's all I have for you today. Thanks for coming by this Clip Studio tutorial. There'll be another one next month. And until then, I'll see you until next time. Oh, by the way, if you know any cool line art styles, like drop them below. I want to see them because that would be really fun. Peace out.